Hello and welcome to the Applications Insights webinar. We are so glad to see that so many of you are joining us today. We really hope that you find this next hour both insightful and clear to understand. So let's start with some introductions. Hello, my name is Sarah. I come from Poland and I study architecture here at KTH and I'm doing my master's. And I'm joining here with David. Yeah, uh, and I'm an admissions officer. So I've been working at the admissions office for eight years now. Okay, let's have a look at the agenda for today. We'll start off by looking at why KTH might be the school for you. Then we'll move on to the five steps of completing your application. And then finally, we'll review some of the most common questions that we get on our social media DMs, as well as some emails for the general application and admissions offices. So now you'll also see that the Q&A function is open. So if you have any direct questions, we have some staff and students ready to answer them for you. Uh, but I do recommend following along the presentation uh, since we'll probably cover some of the topics here today. And here's a little fun fact. The building that you see here in the photo is actually where we're streaming from. So there you go. Why KTH? I guess that's a question everyone might ask themselves when applying. I'm going to tell you a bit more about KTH and Sweden's basically leading technical university. So since the start, KTH has been at the center of many of technological advances in Sweden. And over the last 190 years, KTH has gone on to become one of Europe's leading technical universities, attracting talent from all over the world, uh, we have now about 13,000 full-time students and about 1.5 thousand are actually international master's students. We also have about 63 uh, English taught master's programs on offer, which is amazing for those of you English speakers. And the graduation ceremony you can actually see here in the photo takes place in the same building as the Nobel Prize ceremony. So that is something special that you don't get every day in any other university, pretty much. KDH professor Hannes Alphen was actually awarded a Nobel Prize in 1970 uh, for physics. And we're pretty much still prominent in several of the technical subject areas um, and being also top 50 uh, in the world for universities in electrical engineering, material sciences, mechanical engineering, architecture, and civil engineering. So what sets KDH apart from other universities is kind of the personal approach uh, to teaching. Uh, so classes and seminars are held in smaller groups and you really get that uh, teacher-student connection. Um, and KDH really encourages the entrepreneurial mindset and an innovative, I would say, spirit among students. Also, KDH is often done, education at KDH is often done in collaboration, and it is giving students a lot of practical knowledge um, and contacts for their future careers. So now you know a little bit more about KDH and how it is to study here. Let's move on to the five steps of how to complete your application. So to submit a successful application together with David here, we're going to present to you a guide through each step. So this process actually applies to the main programs. So just remember that joint uh, programs have a different um, process for applications, but those are always listed and clearly stated. So there's no rush and no worry about finding information on our website. But here we are. So there's five steps. First of all, choose your program, then see what kind of admissions requirements you have to meet. And then let's all, we move on to uh, the application deadlines. So you'll be applying through universityadmissions.se and the first deadline is the 15th of January, but you have to submit all your documents by the 1st of February. And then also the same day is the deadline for application fees. So it's already the 7th of December. <laughs> we now have 
the idea of the deadlines that are coming up in February. And some of you are wondering, how much time does it take for the application to actually be completed? And this is really a personal matter. It really depends how much it takes you to create a CV, motivation mm -hmm. letter, how much time it takes you to gather all your, um, well, reference letters and so on. So it's really up to uh, your kind of style of, of working. Okay, the first step, how exciting you get to choose your program. <laughs> so personally, I actually picked my program based on the fact that I was 100% sure I wanted to do architecture. So what I did is actually just went on to the kdh.se slash master and looked if there is an architecture program here. Luckily, there is. And as I mentioned before, there are 63 programs um, given by five schools. So there's everything for everyone i'm sure um and when you apply you actually get to pick your top four programs that you want to attend to so again even if you're undecided you have four slots to fill um but there is a ranking which we'll mention later on yeah so all of the subjects are actually mentioned in webinars that we've done previously there's actually an introduction to all the subject areas on the website already uploaded if you want to have a look at those if you hadn't seen them live and there's definitely some first-hand information from students and staff also um, on our website and blog so you're welcome to have a look at that okay step number two over to you david yeah the admission requirements this is this is my field <laughs> Uh, you need to check, of course, the, the admission requirements for the different programs, but there are also some general requirements which are in common for all of the different uh, programs. And you need to have a bachelor's degree. Um, we're going to get into more detail into exactly what that might entail, but a bachelor's degree equivalent of the Swedish bachelor's degree. Um, and that might look very different in different countries, but We'll, we'll go into to more detail to, in, into those differences as well a bit later. And you also need to check your English proficiency. You need to, to show KTH basically that you have the level of English in order to be able to do your studies on the master's level. Uh, and we will be covering the English proficiency as well a bit later. There are also some program specific requirements. Now, these vary between different programs so they're not the same so one program may require you to have a specific number of credits in a particular specialized field or a specific main subject area uh, for your bachelor's degree for instance so those might be different you, you might want to check out all of the different program specific requirements if you're choosing more than one and i think most of the applicants are not like you going i have architecture i'm going to go with that uh, usually you have a lot more uh, KTH programs that you are applying for, more than one. Uh, and any all of the information basically on the admission requirements you can find on the KTH website, which is kth.se slash master. Uh, and then we go to university admissions. I think Sweden is a bit different to most other countries in this regard, in that we have a centralized admissions portal for all Swedish universities. So you do all of your applications there. Again, it might be different with the joint programs because they have their own special ways of doing admissions, might have their own portals. But for all the other master programs, it's all done on universityadmissions.se. And you have to apply at the very latest on 15th of January. Now, you create an account just like everywhere else you would do, and then you select your programs, which, of course, is a, is a question of what you're interested in. Uh, you've got your four programs that you can choose. And the really important thing to think about here is how you rank them. And this is, again, where Sweden might be a, a little bit different than if you're applying to universities in other countries. So. If you are accepted to a program that you have ranked higher, let's say that you've ranked a, a program as number one and you're admitted there, you won't be considered for the other lower ranked programs because 
you won your top choice. So then they don't need to, to consider admitting you for the for the programs number two and three. Uh, we get quite a lot of people actually who are admitted to one program and who are like, oh, but I wanted to be admitted actually to program number two. And the, it's, the, the answer is no, you can't, you can't change your ranking. So be very, very thorough in terms of how you do your ranking. Uh, yeah. Uh, so these are some more screenshots from university admissions. That's just showing how you submit your application. And we're just going to nag about it forever and ever and say that's the 15th of January. Don't wait too late because there's a there's quite heavy traffic on that on that page late, um, and it's always better to to sort of submit your application well in advance, I should say. Uh, and also remember that you have two more weeks. You have until the first of February to submit all of your documents. So those are two different deadlines. But if you haven't even applied by the 15th of January, then there is no chance for you. You'll have to wait until the next year's admissions round. Was this something when, when you applied? Did you get the whole two different deadlines thing? Yeah, so I did see the two different dates and I did mm -hmm. see the difference. But because I'm a chronic planner and I like to organize everything, I made mm -hmm. sure I actually applied and had all my documents ready by the first deadline. So by the 15th of January, I already submitted everything. So I didn't have to stress about uploading more later mm -hmm. on. But I know that sometimes it's more difficult to get some of the certificates or transcripts and so on from your university. So that is why we have that second deadline to upload everything that's missing. But the application has to be done earlier. Yeah. So speaking of documents, here are some application documents that you might be required um, to submit. Um, we'll sound like a broken record, but basically everything is listed both on university admissions and on KDH websites. But let's go through them together. So we have some certificates and diplomas of your completed degrees, for example, your Bachelor of Science, let's say. Uh, your transcripts and completed courses and grades. This has to be issued officially from the university. So to make sure that it's all uh, qualified, so to say. Mm -hmm. uh, you need a proof of English proficiency. As David has mentioned, this has to be country specific or just meeting mm -hmm. the requirements that, again, are all listed on our websites. Um, identification, so for example, a copy of your passport. And then when you upload all those, which are, again, listed all on the university admissions, you have some specific documents, for example, a CV, a letter of motivation, letters of recommendation, summary sheet, portfolio, and so on. It's all there to find. But uh, David was actually so kind to put together some tips mm -hmm. for everyone. So let's have a look what, uh, what kind of tips do you have for sorting your documents? Yeah, I think I would say the first, maybe the most important one of these uh, is the, the to really check what it says on the program page. So for all your different programs that you're interested in, everything that you need to uh, include in your application is listed on the different program pages. We'll we'll look at one of them just in a, in a minute, but. It's important to note also that not all programs require things such as letter of motivations or letters of recommendation or CV or summary sheet. I mean, it's different for different programs. And if you apply for a program that is that's, that says nothing about a letter of motivation or a CV or a summary sheet or something, then it's because they don't want them. So you don't need to upload things that they are not requiring. So do uh, upload what they require, not more and not less. And then there is the, the issue with the, with the English requirement. Now this is uh, quite, like it's different from which country you have your previous studies. Uh, there are different kinds of internationally recognized English tests, but there are also the ways that you can you can prove your English proficiency maybe through your upper secondary university studies, but that depends on where you did your studies. So it's hard to give this kind of, this is how it works with English, but we'll, we'll get into that. And that's also why there are 
such why, why there is such great information on country specific requirements on university admissions uh, so you can check whatever country where you have had your previous studies they list basically if you have, have your previous studies from this or that country this is what applies um, and so this is an example of one program specific page from the KTH webpage, uh, the Master of Science in Aerospace Engineering. I wonder if they took that because it begins with an A. So that's like the first, <laughs> the first program they went to. Uh, but what you have there on each of the master programs to the left, on the left hand side, you have the same kind of information for each of the different programs. So you have your entry requirements where you can check out what exactly are the entry requirements, the specific requirements for aerospace engineering. Uh, and then you have, is there any kind of specific documentation that aerospace engineering requires? Okay, so we can see they want something called a summary sheet uh, from this, if you're looking at this, it's not saying we need your CV or we need something like this and that, but they do need a summary sheet. Uh, and we usually get quite a lot of questions about these uh, summary sheets. So it's very hard to, to answer uh, in the general, but generally speaking, if you have questions about them, do ask the program responsible persons, which are which is also ask us about studies a bit further down on the left for each program. That's where you ask questions concerning both the summary sheets and the specific entry requirements. Okay. This is where you all bring out your telephones and just uh, snap a picture of this slide because we we won't go through like all the details of exactly the exact levels uh, for the different English tests. The same information is also available on university admissions and on kth.se. Uh, do note that there are quite a few English tests out there. And if you've done an English test and it's not mentioned, then it's not recognized by the Swedish universities. So um, there, and there are so many, so many, so many English tests, and but those are the ones that we, that we uh, accept. And then there's also, of course, as I mentioned, the the different other ways that you can prove your English proficiency and that's where university admissions is the is the go to. Hey, so now that we've gone through the tips, let's have a look at some questions that we have received. This is one that actually is on topic. So mm -hmm. here we go. Hi, KDH. I'm from Brazil and I have a degree in engineering. The language I studied in is English. Can I apply for a master's program with proof of my university degree without a TEFL or IELTS? So mm -hmm. let's have a look. Um, let's go into the university admissions and actually find out with you. Yeah, because this is, I mean, even after eight years as an admissions officers, uh, officer, this is just impossible to, to keep in your brain. I just go to university <laughs> admissions for the answer every time. Okay. So start by going, we want to apply to masters, right? Mm -hmm. And scroll down. And what we're looking for is provide application documents. And you've got loads and loads. All these links are, I mean, all of them are relevant. But what we're looking for now is the country instructions, then the second one there. And you just scroll down and you have the almost the entire Swedish alphabet, and you have more more than 100% of the international alphabet because we have O. <laughs> uh, we go to B for Brazil, and we get the answer, meeting the general requirements, so meeting the English, you scroll down, mm -hmm. yeah, or just click there, both work. So upper secondary studies completed in this country do not meet the English requirements even if you've studied English in upper secondary school. And then it says you can demonstrate that you meet English requirements through certain university studies or an internationally approved English test. Now, because it, 
I would have wanted them to say, if you have a bachelor taught in English from Brazil, that does not meet the English requirement. But they don't say that. But the fact that they don't say, if your bachelor was taught in English, then it's okay. That means, unfortunately, no. But we can go to the general uh, English language requirement, and we're looking through previous university studies there, right? Meeting the English requirement through previous university studies, like the third, yeah. And we won't go through like all of this. Uh, is it a little bit further down, I think, or did you get the wrong link through previous? Yeah, um, like <laughs> two up, a little bit further up, meeting the English requirement through. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's the one. Uh, so English as the main subject, maybe something sixty credits credits with English as language of instruction from an EU EEA. So that's not Brazil. But then there are some more countries that are mentioned. So Jamaica, New Zealand, but again, not Brazil. So staying on point for the Brazil question, unfortunately, it's a no. So mm. whoever asked that will have to will have to do an IELTS or a TOEFL or some kind of internationally recognized English test. So as you can see, although this is a very specific question, you can definitely find answers to your program or country specific question on the university admissions website as long as you clearly and thoroughly read through uh, mm -hmm. the points that are given all the links are very easy to navigate so um, yeah there you go thank you so much it's easy to navigate if you've been on there a hundred times true <laughs> it's easy for me to navigate but it's not always a hundred percent logical so just do it slowly i would say yeah just read it's, thoroughly the information is on there it just might take a while to sort of to find mm -hmm. uh, there's also an application fee if you're a non-eu student so not eu uh, swiss or eea citizen then you have to pay an application fee and that's 900 swedish kroner uh, you can pay it directly on the university admissions website and the application fee deadline is the same as the deadline for submitting supporting documents, the 1st of February. Uh, it's a general application fee, so it's not 900 kroner per program. So if you apply to one or four program, it's the same application fee. Uh, and remember, again, if you uh, sort of upload your documents in time, way before the 1st of February deadline and the, if you apply already now, that gives university admissions a little bit more time to actually be able to come back with some um, comments about like, yeah, we noticed that you haven't got this paper in or you've forgotten mm -hmm. this or that. Uh, so it's a very good idea to apply well in advance of the deadlines, just don't miss the deadlines. <laughs> So, in summary, important to choose your programs. I forgot to mention this. I think in terms, for me, in terms of what programs you should choose, always go with passion. Like, always go with what really interests you. Because um, it's two years of your life, and maybe it's your entire work life after that. You want to do something that, that you really, really enjoy, that you're interested in. Uh, check the admission requirements. Don't forget the application deadline. So always think 15th of January and then think, oh, but I have some extra time. There's that other 1st of February deadline when, when I have to pay and when I have to submit the final um, uh, documents. Yeah. And also we have the results and the 21st of March, but I guess that's not a step. That's when you kind of get to find out your results. Yeah. Okay, coming back to questions uh, from our Instagram, let's let's go through them. Mm -hmm. How can I know that my application is submitted and correct? Well, because uh, this is a question we get very often. People have like applied and then five minutes later they send you an email like, "Is is everything on there?" And we're like, "We we have some things to look at." So. Uh, it's basically your responsibility to see to it that you have everything in there, but to see that it's submitted and that you have all the documents, you can actually see that if you log into university admissions, 
you can go through all that you can see your own uploaded documents on there uh, so if you can see them and if you can see that your your application is in the status of submitted then it's submitted but if everything is correct or not that's your responsibility i would say okay here's another one how does the selection process look like yeah uh i mean the there's an evaluation process which is fairly open uh it's like do you have all these documents and if you don't we you know something something is missing then that's not so good but the internal uh selection or evaluation uh is done always by a program director or someone else that represent the faculty area that you apply for they have a look at your application so looking at knowledgeable stuff within that particular area we'll have a look at your application if you're qualified and then there is this really complicated process of like say giving a, a kind of a merit score to all the different but it's it's always done by the program so for us centrally at the admissions office we check things like is english okay uh, we don't decide like how good someone is within aerospace engineering that would be just horrendous within, within the field i guess <laughs> yeah 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 okay is it possible to send the application even though i haven't done the ielts test yet so i'm guessing uh, english uh, yeah yeah, yeah the, the english test exactly well you can always apply by you can apply and and submit no document whatsoever <laughs> uh because you have until the first of february mm. but we don't conditionally admit people uh on english like so you have the the, the deadline for proving your english is still first of february mm. um so you can't now start checking and see that okay but i have a i have an english test in say march or mm. april and that's still well within the time frames like no that's too late so that, that's too late but you can you can submit your application but you have to prove your english proficiency by first of february so even a, a minute after that's it <laughs> yeah <laughs> right then then it's late mm -hmm. okay if i have other education qualifications apart from my bachelor's degree can i mention that in my summary sheet and application yeah yeah, because we we talked about these summary sheets that some programs might have, uh, which is like a summary of your application or a summary of your merits. And if the summary sheets asks for your score from your bachelor's degree, you should enter that, which is for, for the bachelor's degree. But if there's an option to enter details of other relevant academic records, you can, you know, mention a previous master's degree in that column. Uh, and if that's not available, you can upload details of your previous master's degree on university admissions. Uh, and remember, everything is listed at the program page. That's what you should include in your application. Uh, so we have some people uploading like 200 page things. <laughs> it's like, it's, I don't think it's very likely that someone's going to read all of that. Um, but for in-depth questions about summary sheets, again, always contact the program director or the program responsible, the person or the, the email address, which is mentioned under uh, something like ask us about studies or something for the program pages. Perfect. Do I need to submit one recommendation letter for each KTH program I apply for, or is it okay to use the same one for all? It's okay to use the same one for all. So uh, if you've if you've submitted something onto university admissions, then all the four programs will see all of those things. So you don't need to to uh, sort of upload the same thing four times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember from my application process that I used also. I had two or I think it was two recommendation letters, and it's accessible for all the programs that you're applying to. So yeah, um, yes, perfect. Okay. Another question. My professor wants to send a physical copy of my recommendation letter. Is that something she could do or will my whole application be disqualified? 
No, she can absolutely do that. The, the only annoying thing with university admissions right now is that they have to send it physically. So the professor can't email university admissions such recommendations letters. They only accept through, well, snail mail, like the traditional uh, mail. Uh, and the, the address for university admissions, if you just type basically university admissions recommendation letter, you're going to find it. It's a very precise address, like this is where you send recommendation letters. And that will not in any way disqualify the application as such. No, mm. we, we I mean, a lot of professors do that. But I guess it's more simple to also upload it from your profile, if that's a possibility. Absolutely. If you have it, upload it. But if the professor says, I, you know, I don't want you to have this recommendation letter, then they can send it to, to university admissions. Okay, can I apply for a master's program at KDH if I'm still in my bachelor's? So basically mm -hmm. what I did. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So there, yeah. that's your answer. Yeah. yeah, we get a lot of, we get this question quite a lot, although I think it, the, the information is very clearly out there that to be in your final year of bachelor studies is 100% okay. Uh, for me, it's it's called being conditionally admitted, mm. which is an expression I don't like mm. because you are admitted. Like you're just admitted on the condition that you can show your, your bachelor. Mm. But some people are like, am I really admitted? You're really admitted. Um, so you, what you need to what you need to prove in your application is something that shows that you are in your last year of studies. You need still an official transcript for all completed semesters to date. Uh, so, and you need to submit documentation from your university certifying that you are an active student in your last year. And of course, you still need some kind of English proficiency. Uh, but we get a lot of students who are applying who are, when they apply, don't have a bachelor's. Mm but they show the <laughs> exactly it's in the works and there is a sufficient documentation for us to think it's very very likely that this person will have a bachelor's degree once they come to kth uh, and it's not something that's sort of viewed upon as strange or it's 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 very very normal for people to apply who are, who are in the in the final year and they get admitted <laughs> <laughs> example here yeah <laughs> Okay, here's another question. Do I get a scholarship automatically after applying or do I have to fill out another form? Wouldn't it be wonderful if you just if you just got no, you do have to fill out uh, another form uh, for the scholarship. I think I, actually we do have a slide. I think if you just click on, I think where there's more information about scholarships, uh, mm -hmm. if you go to the next, because you basically go to kth.se slash master and you'll find the link for all the information regarding uh, the scholarship. So there's the KTH scholarship covers all of the tuition fee. It doesn't cover the, the living expenses. Uh, there are also some specialized scholarships. We won't get into that now, but all the information is on there. And... The application deadline is the 15th of January. And we do get these like applicants who have been really tired and like, oh, I, now I submitted my application finally for university admissions. And they email us like the 16th of January. I wanna apply for scholarships. Like, no, too late. So it's the same deadline uh, as the application deadline and you apply on the KTH website. So what does the KDH uh, scholarship cover then? It's the the entire tuition fee for mm -hmm. the whole two years. Perfect. Yeah. So apply. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? Okay. Uh, honestly, I just loved looking at some of the messages we get on our Instagram as well and our DMs. Here someone said, not a question, but I'm really excited to start my KDH journey next year. Fingers crossed that I'll get admitted. We are keeping our fingers crossed for you. <laughs> Honestly, uh, it's just so fun to see so much excitement around applications and not only stress because I feel like application can be a little bit stressful. It's something new. You don't know what the results are going to be. 
uh, but it's mm -hmm. uh, it's just honestly such an exciting time. Yeah. Here are some additional resources. So I know that when I was applying, I was super interested in finding out what's it like being a student, where are the facilities, what kind of events are happening. So as you can see on this slide here, there is tons and tons of content that we provide for you to search and look at and watch and read. There's literally all you can imagine. There is a, a video on how to apply. So if you want a revision of what we just explained, you can go over mm -hmm. there. If you want to contact a student from a specific, uh, well, industry study uh, or program, then you can also do that on our blog. Uh, you can read on our blog from student experiences. There's also our Instagram, which I mentioned before. So we create content, some tips and tricks, as well as some insight on what it's like from a student's perspective. And as we also mentioned, uh, the previous webinars that have been happening since autumn are also now uploaded uh, on our website. So if you want to check those out, you're more than welcome to. And also speaking of events, uh, we have some more uh, things happening. Uh, for example, here we have our last minute application questions chat. Um, so those are gonna be live in the times that are listed on the slide. So what that means is on our website, there's gonna be a little pink chat with me box um, that will have some live um, chats active. So we'll have mm -hmm. some staff from KDH uh, answering your questions or queries um, or basically some assistance if you're looking for some. And so now the Q&A, speaking of chats, <laughs> it will be still open until all the questions have been answered. So you can still go ahead and ask something in there if you still are wondering. Uh, but from us, from the office here at yeah. KDH, that's all. Thank you so much for joining. And uh, we really hope that you enjoyed this time with us and that we uh, explained everything as well as possible. Uh, hopefully, yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> and uh, have a lovely rest of your day, evening, morning, wherever you are. And good luck with your applications. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.